John Rockefeller was in his heyday, they asked him, they said, what would make you happy? He said, just one more dollar. So he was worth back then $182 billion. Can you imagine that? $182 billion in that day. But he was a giver, Joey. He'd stand in New York City on the street corner and give away dimes. He'd be like, he must have been mad. That'd have been like your buddy Alice Walton standing on the street corner giving out pennies. One ten, my one of my Aunt Mary Lee's favorite songs.
Are you requesting? Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? Page 180. We haven't done it in a while. Oh. You know the rules. We don't know it. You've got to come up and lead it. You did? You don't want that. You never know. <laughs> Hillbilly G. You know, something that you folks a lot of times uh, can't hear, sometimes you'll see Dixie go to a point, you know, right up here? So she'll be going walking by me and she'll go like this. She's like, oh, 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 grass. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But a lot of times she's up here, she's just reading me and Brother Phil the right act. I don't know if you can see her doing it. I love bluegrass. She plays all the time. Oh, God. It's, it's so funny because, uh, yeah, it's just pretty funny. Well, why don't we come in fellowship on this old song?
Amen. this last week, but then he wants to sing it again. It's my favorite song. All the songs that I get here are my favorite songs. <laughs>
Buried my body in the ground, but don't be long. I will be praising my dear Savior while at his throne. A thousand years is as one day with him. Oh, I have a home. Amen. My Lord. I have a home. Time and no 
and the older one took the stick away from him. And the toddler started crying. And they started fussing and getting mad. And, and just about when the mother was about ready to put him in his place, he took that glow stick and he broke it. And shook it up and he gave it back to him. He said, you know, he goes, I sit there and I watch that. He goes, I thought, he goes, well, here this toddler, he was content to just have that, that little stick and play with it and everything. He said, but that young man told his little brother, he said, wait, you have to break it. He said, after he broke it, it he realized his purpose. And he said, you know, he goes, God spoke to me through that. He goes, I realize it's not until we're broken that we realize our little purpose. Amen. Sure. I heard a preacher say one time, a long time ago, Kathy, he said, when God puts his mind to use a man, he'll have to first break him. Mm -hmm. Not to hurt us, but so that he can heal us. Mm -hmm. He can help us. And uh, something so profound from a glow stick. <laughs> how, you know, I've seen people that were broken in life, Brother Steve, and then something came out of that yeah. that caused them to shine so much brighter for the Lord. And uh, the world can understand it. We're all working 50 hours, and, you know, we got overtime in our car, and everything looked wonderful. They understand us being in, in a good mood and everything. What they don't understand is when you have joy in your heart, yeah. and you're dealing with the bad doctor before and your loved one did get healed, and all these other things that happened, then they want to know what makes the difference. And I don't know. know. They just kind of find my yeah. Anybody else want to talk? Have one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. No, sure. I walk by to the Buddha, looked inside, and I saw his bones. I traveled on to see Muhammad, still wrapped up in his great clothes. And then I journey to a garden where old Joe. Precious lamb, God's own begotten, was no longer in the grave. Amen. If you knew him like I know him, you would know that he's alive. If you felt him like I feel him.
I taught them today. He said, I said, Josh and he said, uh, I said, we were talking about the Lord and the uh, being talked about. He said, I, I asked him this today. He said, I don't know how many people are struggling with pain and suffering and, and loss and stuff. I asked him this. He said, it's only by the hand of God. I good grace that I'm standing here today. That I can come to church and praise it one more time. And I thank you for what, what he's done for me in my life. He's been so good to me. Over the years, I've been having a lot of heartaches and sickness and stuff, but he's never left me. And I'm glad for that. Good to be among the living to die. Amen. I died in 1984. I died out to myself and the things I wanted in this world. Amen. See, I was following that other Jesus. The other Jesus that you knew a little bit about, but yet you still wanted to be foolish in this world and, and chase after things that wasn't good for you. There are hopeless people walking around out there today. They don't know the beginning from the end or the end from the beginning. Bless you. But in 1984, I was quickened Bless by the Spirit of God. Amen. And it moved upon me in a way. Thank you, Lord. I started that journey like Abraham toward the city. Even though I didn't know the scripture, I, I knew that there was something different that happened to me that night. I like looking back. The Bible says if a man looks back, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. I believe that's saying if you look back and desire the things that you were in, that's right. you're not fit to be in the kingdom of God. I love to tell people about where I've been, the things that I've done. Boy, they just climb right up in that conversation and they make themselves at home. And they'll tell me the things that they've done. And then one day I'll look at it, and then I'll look at them and I'll say, but I found something better. His name is Jesus. Everything that I've done, everything I drank, everything I put in my body, no way in nearly comes to what satisfies my spirit today. See, I got a hope. Yes, amen. That I got a hope that I can spread the gospel to a lost and dying world also. If it be in the church house or if it would be anywhere else. My hope is to be able to be used by God to be able to minister to people one on one or however it shall be done. When Jesus says, speak, you speak. When he tells you, hold your tongue, you hold your tongue. So we're going to look at some scripture tonight over in St. John's 11th chapter about Lazarus. And uh, the Lord put this thing together for us tonight. And we'll just do our little part. Where you at, Brother Gene? Uh, St. John chapter 11. You know, I like coming into the house of God and hearing the old songs sung, new songs sung, different uh, people sing. And I, I'd rather come into the house of God and hear everyday people sing the Spirit, uh, the, the Spirit of God than go and see any of these big entertainers anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and hear them sing, and then, and then you read about them in the paper and the kind of life that they live. There's something that takes place in a man and a woman when, when the Spirit of God takes a hold of you. There should be a change made. Amen. Everything about you should change. Amen. Everybody around you that used to be your friends, probably are not going to be your friends no more. Amen. There's a change that takes place. We're going to read about Lazarus tonight. 
And what marvelous work Jesus did that day. We're going to be in the 11th chapter, starting in the 14th verse. And this is what the Word of God says. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there to test ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. And then said Thomas, which is called Didymus. Thank you. Unto the fellow, uh, fellow disciples, let us go, also go, that we may die with him. When, uh, then when Jesus came, he found that he had been laying in a grave four days already. Now Bethany was about nine, nine unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Back then they used to send mourners. They were like a professional mourner. And they would go there and they would wail and, and, and throw dust in the air and, and all these different things. Oh. Back in that time, I believe that they were there and they were um, just going at it and, and along come Jesus. I'm glad Jesus comes along. Amen. Then there, uh, Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, uh, Martha set still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know whatever now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. And Jesus said unto her, your brother, and Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. And Martha said unto him, I know what he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection of life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall also believe thou this. Mary knew, uh, Martha knew, that Jesus was the answer. See, this world, they're, they're walking around, they're, they're trying to serve Jesus, and, and, and they're trying to serve this world, and they're trying to get along, and, and they're trying to uh, tickle people's fe uh, ears and, and everything else. Now I'll get to the lost people. See, them are church people. <laughs> we got people out there today that just doesn't have anything want to do with God, period. But like my brother said earlier, when they're in trouble and they're down on their knees, they'll cry out to a God that they don't supposedly believe in. Amen. It's just the hardness of their heart, Brother Dave, that they won't follow after the Lord and Pastor. Amen. That's that other Jesus I'm talking about tonight. That's a Jesus that the world wants you to have tonight. Is that other Jesus. You know, they don't want you to be that fanatical Jesus that talks about his forgiveness and his love and his mercy. Well, if I'm going to talk about Jesus to somebody, it's going to be about a hope. Yep. You can have hope in this world through Jesus Christ. Amen. And that we'd be able to walk in the newness of life. Amen. Now she said, whatever you ask, the Father will do. Yep. And Jesus was there to raise Lazarus from the dead. All the other people were there just doing whatever they did back in those days and following along and, and, and being whatever they want to be. Sort of like this world today. They want to put a front on. They believe in God, but they don't believe in the power thereof in God. Amen. <laughs> and that's where a lot of church folks are right now, Brother Steve. They're, they're sitting at home. They, they got their little card punch they believe in. And they believe that they can live like the devil. Amen. We was in the lunchroom one day, and some guy, every day boy, and I tell you what, didn't make a sailor blush. And one of them kept using God's name in vain. And the boss was in there, and he was right along with them. And he, they were just going at it. They were talking like rough sailors. 
And this guy used God's name in vain one too many times. And I turned around and I looked at him and I said, listen, you're cursing the man that can save you from going to hell. He's the only one that can save you from going to hell. Yeah. And I tell you what, you, I don't know what, it, it is ran like a bunch of rats. Like cockroaches, you turn the light on the cockroaches, they go. Boy, I tell you what, they didn't want nothing to do with the truth. Amen. Called the blood of earlier. Bless him, Lord. Had a guy at the, the apprentice, I told the boss about the apprentice, and said, hey, this apprentice is supposed to be doing this, and he's not doing it. I said, maybe you just need to bend his ear a little bit, Brian. Well, Brian, go over there and talk soon. He drops about 13 cuss words in a row. And, and this is an atheist guy at church, at, at work, and, and I, I've talked about him before. And uh, he said, Gary yeah, he didn't say that. See, there's a change, baby. Wherever we walk, we are a representative of Jesus Christ. And the way we live our lives ought to reflect it. Now listen to what happens here. We're going to skip over to verse number 39. John chapter 11. Verse 39. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha said, the sister of him that was dead saith unto him, Lord, by the time he stinketh, for he had been dead for four days. Wow. Jesus said unto her, I said unto thee, that if thou would believe, Thou wilt see the glory of God. Amen. Then he took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said to the Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Amen. And I know that thou hast hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I say it, that they may believe that thou shalt have sent me. And and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. And he said that, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with great cloth, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, said unto them, loosen him and let him go. Amen. I remember the night I gave my life to the Lord and uh, devil uh, tried to come against me right away. And I believe God said, get away from him. He's mine now. I, I know for a fact that whatever I shall ask out of this and God, if it's for me, that God will will it. And our will should be to live a life that is acceptable unto Christ. Amen. That we can be a light and salt to this world. Amen. And show people that they are a hope in this life. Amen. And not to go through life being so miserable. Dragging yourself down into a pit. Self-pity parties. Believe me, uh, when I got saved, I thought it was downhill both ways. I'm roller skates. I thought it was just going to be easy. And everything was going to be great. Boy, it didn't take me very long to find out that the world didn't want nothing to do with it. They'd say, come with me down to the bar here. They'd say, come with me and drink of the river of life. Come drink of the Holy Spirit. Come and see what Jesus Christ has for you. For there's hope in it. See, if you get Jesus wrong, you got the whole thing wrong. Amen. And they want to try to serve Jesus in a way that is satisfying unto them. I work with a couple guys, they, they swear up and down that they're born again. Uh, servants of God. But the language that they'll use from time to time, the things that they'll talk about from time to time, Amen. shows that their faith is not anchored yeah. in the Lord. What we need to do in our lives is just to please God in our lives. When he says go, you go. When he says open your mouth, open your mouth. I tell you what, I, I still want to get down to Tennessee. I've told this a million times. There's a guy down there one day, and he's down there in a little knock, and he's going to load my van up, 
and he was just cussing and carrying and going on. And I said, what's wrong with you? He said, man, he goes, I used to live in Florida. He goes, I moved over here to Tennessee, over here by Memphis, and, and, and it's no better. And I said, well, you need Jesus. He goes, oh, a Bible phone. I said, Jesus will make a difference in your life. I still want to go back here. I want to see if the man's still working here. But see, we're the water also. And, and, and God will give the increase. Yeah. But we need to be about his business. Amen. Because there are dead people walking around there. Remember the movie? Uh, it was an old scary movie. I see dead people. It was in the movie. A little boy. And I see dead people where I work. I see dead people everywhere I go. They have no hope. They have nothing, Brother Dave. Amen. They got a big house. They got cars. They got anything they want. But they don't have Jesus. So they're selling their soul for whatever pleases them. Believe in one day that they're good enough. Now I look back a lot in my life about where I was before I accepted the Lord. I was drifting to and fro. I was sort of like the disciples the night that they were out in the ship and the storm came. Jesus wasn't with them. But when Jesus showed up, everything calmed down. Yep. See now, Peter, they were four fishermen there, and they believed they knew the water. They knew all about being out on the water. Yep. But it said that they were fear and trembling for their life. And Jesus came along. People need to hear Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I got excited last night watching a football game. <laughs> and, and my wife looked at me and she goes, that wasn't very good. And I said, what? She goes, you're talking about the play, right? I said, no, I'm talking about the man that was sitting in the stand with a sign that said, John 3, 16, because you don't see it no more. I really shot Brother Dave, they put it on the camera. I got excited. Here was a man, you know, he was at a sporting event, that he was rooting for his team, whichever team it was, but he was sending out a message, God so loved the world, that whoever shall believe is in him, shall have everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> well, you go back in that boat, we was all in that boat at one time in our lives. We were just floating along, going through storms, and, and doing whatever we could. But we wasn't saved, Brother Dave. Amen. Until Jesus showed up. This world needs Jesus in a terrible way. Amen. And I sit back and I think, not that I'm nowhere near anywhere a great uh, speaker for the Lord or, or whatever, but I believe the the, the pulpit is let God down. I believe the pulpit is trying to teach another Jesus. I think they're trying to say it's okay. But it's not okay, Brother Dave. God doesn't call us to be a part-time Christian. The Bible says that he needs a good soldier. He needs a soldier that will put on the whole armor of God and go out into the battle daily. And to be able to raise up a standard for him that those that will come to Him will know Him. Amen. Amen. I often wonder, I sit back a lot of times, I wonder about the people that I have explained Jesus Christ to, where they're at and what they're doing in their lives right now. See, I might have watered, but somebody else might have came along one day on the street corner and told them about Jesus. And the thought was already there. Amen. This Jesus that raised Lazarus from the dead raised each and every one of us from the dead. Amen. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. Yep. And he raised them and what did he tell them? Unloosen them and let them go. Yep. And we took to the, our highways and our byways, our workplaces, our homes or whatever and things changed around us and we was able to go out and you know, like a, when you a, a, a put a roll of corn in, right? You take the hole and you make that roll. 
and then you put the seeds in there. My dad was kind of funny. He, <laughs> you know, I heard about Brother Phil. Uh, little Phil was talking about Brother Phil would play on a roll or whatever. Then he'd get down on his knees and pray to God. He'd say, you know, be a blessing on you, Lord. My dad would put like two or three things of corn. Then he'd take his foot and he'd go. And, he'd put, and I'd look at him and i said, what are you doing? See, he was so incorrectly. But today's world, they want to sow incorrectly. They want to tell you that you need Jesus, but it's all right if you got some sin in your life. Amen. You know, you can be gay and love the Lord. You can be a drunk and love the Lord. You can be a drug addict and love the Lord. But that's not what my Word of God tells me. He delivered me from those things. And I enjoyed them. But I found something better. The world needs a touch of God. They need Jesus Christ. Amen. In a world lost and undone, get more sinful each and every day of our lives. Right. And yet we strive on. I was watching a video of a preacher in, uh, in uh, Canada. They're in the middle of service and they, and they come and and, and uh, the authorities come and they, they, they're knocking on the door and he finally goes down there to see what's going on and they're trying to tell him that they're running an underground church and that he had to come with them and, and, and uh, surrender himself. And he told them, this is not undercover, it's open to whoever shall want to come in to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, they left. And then they came back again. And they arrested him. They put him in jail for three months in solitary confinement. And then they told him, you can get out if you don't preach no more in the name of Jesus. Mm. He's preaching. <laughs> and we get a little worried if somebody's going to say boo to us. We get a little worried in the store if you say Merry Christmas, somebody's going to get mad. Remember, I was down in Toledo with uh, John when we were over at Hope, and we were doing some some work and out of church, and I said, well, time we run to Lowe's, it'd be just as easy to run down to Menards down there on the Alexis Road, and we'll just run down there. Okay, so we jump in the car, and we run down there, and, and you know, you know, John and me, we just like to cut up and be crazy, and, and this lady said, well, so-and-so wants to go home early. She's only been here a half hour. So then she comes up and she I said, only a half hour? That's the best she can do? And she says, my daughter's in the hospital. She's real sick. I said, let's pray. And I reached out and grabbed her hands. You know, John was like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm praying out loud for this woman's child. Amen. See, there's hope in Jesus. I got hope in doctors too, don't get me wrong. But I've never been to a place where somebody's been operated on that I don't go back and pray with them. And if the doctor's there, and I'll say, Lord, guide this doctor. I don't trust him, I trust you. And most of the doctors will amen to that. <laughs> this world needs Jesus. Amen. And the only way they're going to get it is if we take it to them. Yeah. I just thank the Lord that He said loose them. Yeah. I, 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 I sat back and I think about my conversion. And I'll start crying. I didn't deserve it. But yet He was willing to go for me. And he's willing to go for whomsoever shall call upon his name. I tell him, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. Amen. That's what the Lord gave.
Hayden hold over the help. That's your move. Um, we sort of all from God. And, and, and there's no end to him, and there's no beginning to him. His love is, is merciful, and one day after a while, we'll gather around that old throne up there in heaven, and the angel will sing a song that the angels ain't going to be able to join in. And we're just going to praise him forever. So what we go through here, it's going to be worth it after all. Amen. No matter how rough it gets, don't ever think you're bigger than God. That's what the Lord gave me, so I'm going to turn back over to the pastor. God bless him. Amen.